The most disappointing part of our history is that we are learning history from the invaders point of view. This is very unfortunate. Our kings and queens are just a minor part of Mughal's history. I was taught about Shivaji Maharaj as a part of Aurangzeb's period and there was just only one line about Tara Bai, the queen who protected the kingdom single-handedly against Aurangzeb for almost a decade and she's worth enough for just one line. This is really saddening. Few days back I was reading about Akbar and there I found a queen named Rani Durgavati and you know what her bravery and sacrifice was worth enough for just four lines. So here I am unfolding the untold story of Rani Durgavati. Durgavati was the daughter of the king of Bundelkan and she was married to Raja Dalpat the king of Gondwana which now comes under the Madhya Pradesh. Unfortunately Raja Dalpat died when their son Veer Narayanan was just 5 years old. Now Rani Durgavati being a widow and a mother of a toddler takes control over the kingdom and managed it exceptionally well she divided the country into several small kingdoms and there were totally 70000 villages and one third of it were directly managed by her and the rest of the part was subordinate like she appointed leaders who will work under her control abul fasal the contemporary historian of akbar's court says that the rani's courage guidance and kindness was such she brought the whole kingdom under her control and she was a great hunter the double fossil says if a lion was sighted anywhere in her terrain she would not drink water until she shot it down she was beautiful courageous and a queen of a rich kingdom so obviously the eyes of the enemies were watching her very closely and as of con the commander of akbar's army was the one who was waiting for an opportunity and abul fasal goes to an extent saying that the commander begin with a flirting behavior and wanted to touch the beauty of gondwana it clearly indicates that the Asaf Khan was more into Rani Durgavati rather than the kingdom like he expected in 1564 Akbar sent the order to Asaf Khan to march upon the queen Rani Durgavati's reputation lies on this war because the enemy was not just eyeing on the kingdom but also on her she marched with 5000 men and told them they can leave if they want but she would not she said she would either conquer or fall the army she led included her own son Veer Narayanan at the opposite was the Mughal's army which had 10000 cavalry alone that was literally double the size of the queen's army still the queen managed to lead the army very well and killed 300 opponents abul fasal the historian says the rani was victorious that same evening she held a council and proposed a surprise attack on the opponents but no one agreed to it she again proposed a idea this time to a much smaller group of her most loyal men but still no one agreed to it the next morning as the queen predicted asaf khan was indeed in a better position still the queen's men fought their best the battle continued for 3 days and it was a bloody exhausting struggle veer narayanan the only son of the queen broke through the enemy's army 3 times but unfortunately he got wounded rani ordered immediately her son to be taken away from the battlefield that moment rani acted more like a mother than like a queen even though rani was the one who was leading the army but when veer narayanan left most of the army followed him she had only 300 men left in the battlefield but she was not ready to give up she continued to fight fearlessly until she was struck by two arrows one in the temple and one in the neck and she fainted because of that the queen's commander named adar brought her safely out of the battlefield when she opened her eyes he told her to run away but she asked him to kill her but adar refused obviously he did not have the courage to take the life of his queen rani durgavati then pulled out her dagger and killed herself she decided to die respectfully rather than falling in the hands of a man who was waiting with nothing but lust and as of con captured a thousand elephants and this was nothing compared to the treasure that was yet to come veer narayanan fled to the fort of chauragar which was the warehouse of the treasure and after two months as of con's army reached there and the young king was killed The Mughal soldiers found a lot of wealth in that fort including 100 literal pots of gold. After spending 4 days in that fort, they opened a room and found a room full of burned bodies of women. Yes, the women in that fort performed the jauhar. They decided to burn themselves rather than being sex slaves. Unfortunately or fortunately, two women survived. One was an unnamed princess, the other was Rani Durgavati's sister Kamalavati. Both were hiding behind a large piece of wood that it saved them rather than burn them. And obviously those two women were sent to Akbar's court as slaves. And this is the story of Rani Durgavati which the historians thought not worth more than few lines.